He kept saying, well, ask them if they don't want if, if they want to continue to tax rich people at the rate that they are now. In other words, letting people keep their own money, which is essentially what he was saying. Ask them, OK, well, if you don't want to uh, cut taxes for the middle class and, and keep those taxes, who, whose taxes do you want to cut? Whose taxes do you want to increase? Um, no one's. That's what we've been saying this entire time. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. The parts where Joe Biden does the worst, I think, are when he talks about economics because it affects everything else. And so we'll go ahead and watch a couple clips from that. How do we pay for my jobs and family plan? I made it clear we can do it without increasing the deficit. Let's start really? with what I will not do. I will not impose any tax increase on people making less than $400,000. But it's time for corporate America and the wealthiest 1% of Americans to just begin to pay their fair share. Just their fair share. What Joe Biden is talking about is completely impossible. You cannot spend at the level you're talking about and increase taxes and it be deficit neutral. It just can't be done. The math doesn't work. He's proposing trillions and trillions in new spending. Uh, if you add it all up, I, I believe the total that I saw was anywhere between eight and 10 trillion over the next 15 years. But the tax increases that he's expecting those are not going to come anywhere near the numbers that he needs to get to that point. He cannot possibly add that level of spending without increasing the deficit. He's lying to you, to your face. And more importantly, when he says, look, they just have to pay their fair share. They got to pay their fair share. What's their fair share? Can someone please explain this to me? What is the fair share? Give me a dollar amount. Give me a percentage amount. Give me something. Something tangible that I can know what their fair share is so I can know when we've met it. This is something that Democrats do not like to do. They don't want to give you a dollar amount. If you've ever heard the song by um, CCR that, you know, Fortunate Son, they say when you ask how much should we give, the answer is more, 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 more. That's the only answer that they know, gang. That's why they never give you a tangible goal. Because then you could say, oh, we met the goal, they're paying their fair share now, and then, they want, then they'd have to say, well, really their fair share is more than that. They'll never give you an actual dollar amount because they don't want to be held to that standard. They don't want to be tied down and say, well, we, I know we said we were going to tax them at 90%, but we really, really need 95%. We feel that that's fair. And the other reason that they won't say it is because they know how ridiculous they would sound if they did give a percentage to the average voter. Because the average voter, and, and there have been polls done on this, they feel that the rich are not paying their fair share. But then when you say, but they're paying about, depending on what state they're living in, about 60-ish percent of their income goes to taxes, they're like, oh, that seems a little high. See, even uber-rich people, even millionaires and billionaires, when you tell the average person how much money in taxes they actually have taken away from them, then they're like, yeah, that does seem kind of, uh, kind of high. It goes back to a mentality they don't want to give you the percentage because they know that once they hear it, it sounds unreasonable. It's much easier to just say, well, they should pay their fair share. And sort of to illustrate this, look at this, um, which comes from the Heritage Foundation. You can see here, this is the percentage of all income earned. So this is a, a percentage of the GDP versus the share of income taxes that are paid. So the bottom 50% of Americans make roughly 12% of all the money. 12% of all the GDP, all the production in America is brought home by the bottom 50% of Americans, and yet they're only contributing to 3% of the overall tax burden. And you'll see there that as you go along, the richer you are, the larger portion of the tax burden you actually bear. If you're poorer, you're already putting way less into the system than you earn. And if you're richer and it says the top 1%, you're earning about 21% of all of the income in America, yet you're paying 40% of the tax burden. And what this illustrates is that rich people are absolutely paying their fair share. 
the top 5% to the top 1% are paying for way more of the total tax burden than the amount of income they actually take in. And so, how is that not paying their fair share? How is it that you're earning 20% of the wealth, paying for 40% of the tax burden, and they're not paying enough? I read a really brilliant analogy by an economist, and he said, if we paid for a dinner, like let's say that there were 100 people in the room, and we paid for dinner like we paid the taxes, and each plate was $50 a head. Well, that would mean, and according to this graphic that we looked, the, the bottom um, 50% would be paying $3 a head. And the richest person in the room would be paying about $1,700. And all the Democrats would be complaining that that one rich guy that paid $1,700 for dinner, when you had people at the bottom, half of the people in the room, paying only $3 for a $50 meal, saying that the rich guy didn't pay his fair share. $1,700 a plate. That's the mathematical equivalent to how much rich people are paying. And by the way, I have said this for a long time, I'm in favor of a flat tax. If you're making a million dollars a year, you ought to be paying 10% of that million. And that 10% of that million is still way more than the guy making 30000 a year. I mean, that guy's only paying $3,000 in taxes. It's still a progressive tax. But it would be significantly more fair than what we've got going on right now where we're taxing the mess out of everybody that is doing well. And what actually winds up happening in this is the real amount in, in tax... And by the way, that's after tax deductions and everything else. What's actually going on here is that we are already living under a progressive tax system. It's already incredibly redistributive, and the Democrats want it to be more so. Now, here's another one that kind of illustrates this point. You can see here, and this comes from the Tax Foundation, this is the amount of income that you take in and how much you paid in taxes and how much benefit you see from that. So you'll see the uh, middle quintile is where this flips. And, and by the way, that just means like the if you were to divide Americans into uh, the bottom 20%, the next 20%, the middle 20 the uh, middle upper 20 and then the top 20 income earners. This is the amount they pay in taxes versus the benefit that they get back. And so you'll see there, if you're in the first three quintiles, in other words, 60% of the American people are seeing significantly more benefit, they're getting more value for their dollar that they send into the Fed than they pay into it. And so they're actually a drain on the tax system. And then the top 40%, they're paying way more than they're getting out of it. And so... Our tax system as it exists right now, before Joe Biden and what he's trying to implement, is already a radically progressive Marxist system. We're already having redistribution of wealth on a massive scale. It's just because we have some of those free market capitalist ideas still in place, they're still able to make enough money that it somewhat offsets it, but they're still seeing way less value for it and, and getting way less back than they're putting in. The rich people are already paying their fair share. I'm sorry, but if you don't believe this, you're a stupid person. The data is there. It's incredibly obvious. The numbers are nowhere close to making that case. And Joe Biden continues to do this because the goal is to try to divide people. The goal is to try to set up this classist system to where we're trying to divide people along those lines. And he doesn't stop there. This is another part of the speech by Joe Biden. I believe what I propose is fair. Fiscally responsible. And it raises revenue to pay for the plans I propose and will create millions of jobs that will grow the economy and enhance our financial standing in the country. When you hear someone say they don't want to raise taxes on the wealthiest 1% or corporate America, ask them whose taxes you want to raise. Instead, who's they going to cut? So there's a couple of reasons that that's, this one in particular is really dumb. First of all, it assumes that government is just more efficient than private business. Because you heard what he said there, he's like, I believe what I'm proposing is fair, and it's fiscally responsible, and here's why. Yes, we're going to be taking billions of dollars out of the economy, but it's going to create jobs. Yeah, 
what do you think is more likely to create jobs? Letting people keep their own money and letting people actually invest in things or the government taking that money from people and creating jobs out of whole cloth. We've seen the results of this play out in the past. Private industry does a much better job of creating long-lasting jobs than government does. It just does. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have tried this before, right? We spent about $2 trillion, not quite $2 trillion, but close to it, in two stimulus packages, I don't know, there was some guy that was a vice president at that point when those stimulus packages went through. Oh, right, it was Joe Biden. And those stimulus packages were such an abysmal failure, the architect of them, Barack Obama, came back and said, yeah, shovel-ready jobs didn't, they weren't quite as shovel-ready as we thought they were. Even Barack Obama had to admit that the stimulus did not create good jobs that paid in the long term. These were temporary things. They weren't as instantaneous as he believed that they were going to be. And the whole thing was an abysmal failure. I mean, even Barack Obama understood this and admitted to it. And Joe Biden's like, yeah, we need to try that again. You know what the definition of insanity is? It's trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results. If he couldn't make it work under Barack Obama, why would we think Joe Biden could do the same thing and it will work? It'll just work this time. I don't. This is going to be an obscure reference, but have you ever seen Bee Movie? The movie with Jerry Seinfeld is a little cartoon bee. There's a really great scene in there where he sees a window and he runs right into it and it, it, he smacks his head against the glass and he's like, Ah, that was weird. Maybe it'll work this time. And then he does it again and does it again. No, this time. No, this time. That's how Democrats are with taxation and spending. They really believe that no matter how many times they fail, no matter how many times their policies show to be abysmal failures, they're like, but maybe it'll just work this one time. Maybe we can. We, we just need to get all the pieces in place the right way, and, and it'll just stimulate the economy this time. And it never works. Remember that the stimulus was done, the original one, was done, I believe, in 2009, and then we had another one in 2011. The recession didn't end, or, or didn't even really start to recover, until the final year of Obama's presidency. It had no effect on the economy. It was mostly a bunch of political paybacks for his buddies that helped him get elected. He kept saying, well, ask them if they, don't want, if, if they want to continue to tax rich people at the rate that they are now, in other words, letting people keep their own money, which is essentially what he was saying, Ask them, okay, well, if you don't want to uh, cut taxes for the middle class and, and keep those taxes, who, whose taxes do you want to cut? Whose taxes do you want to increase? Um, no one's. That's what we've been saying this entire time. Republicans aren't saying, let's cut taxes for the upper class so that we can put a larger burden on the middle class. We're saying, cut taxes for everyone. That's the goal. I don't want to increase taxes on the middle class. I want everybody's tax burden to go down to about 10%. Everyone, across the board, rich people, poor people, doesn't matter. Everybody should be paying roughly 10% of their income. In fact, I'd even be fine with going lower. I just think that 10% is the only reasonable amount. The, the only way that we could get it down. If we could get it lower, I would absolutely be open to that. But no person should be paying more than 10% of their income to the government. And... I would be fine with cutting it for everyone. I, I don't want to increase the tax burden on anybody. And so he creates a weird false dichotomy where he's saying, oh, well, if you don't want to raise taxes on the rich, who do you want to raise taxes on? Um, no one. That's what we've been saying this entire time. When the Trump tax cuts came through, you know what it resulted in? About a 2% cut ta uh, rate cut across the board. Everybody's taxes got decreased. Even the... <laughs> Farthest left-leaning publications, your New York Times and your Washington Post, had headlines like, face it, you got a tax cut. That was literally something that ran in the New York Times. They said, yeah, for the vast majority of Americans, a little over 80% of the population, your taxes are lower now than they used to be. Even the leftists had to admit that. <laughs> if you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. 
If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?